Friends, I welcome you to my channel. Before listening to this story, I will ask you to like and subscribe. It is not difficult for you, but it is pleasant for me. And we're starting. My husband, who I've lived with for 14 years, just said the most shocking thing I've ever heard in my life. I didn't even know he felt that way. I didn't have any guesses. Either this is a new revelation, or he suddenly, at some point of introspection, saw the light. What do you want me to say? I asked. I don't know. He replied, also seeming to be in some kind of shock. I thought about it for a minute. Lie to me? I said. What? What does it mean? From what you just said, you've been lying to me since the day we met. I said. Why stop now? I was at the gym. It was about 2030 and all the lamps were extinguished, except for two above the basket. College was small and I was alone, just throwing three-pointers. The echo of the basketball in the empty hall, the squeak of my sneakers on the floor, all this calmed my soul. I had permission to throw any time I wanted. Not bad, isn't it? I heard from the shadows. A guy came out with a basketball in his hands. Do you mind if I leave with you? He asked. Hey, this is a free country and the gym is not mine, I replied. Thanks. He also had his sneakers in his hands. Cool new Jordans and I've been trying to buy one for a month now. I hit three times in a row from the flank and moved to the corner of the back line. He threw for the first time and missed without touching any part of the basket. He laughed and I giggled. That's not how I imagined it, he said. Did you imagine nothing but a grid? I asked. Yes, there's such a hot girl throwing three pointers here, and I was hoping to make a little more impression, he said. He picked up his ball, dribbled to me, and struck. The throw was monetary because of the three-point arc. Now you've got it, I said, and took a closer look at it. He is white, but very handsome, as it seemed to me. According to my estimates, he is ten years older than me. He held out his fist, and I bumped my fist into his. Sheldon, he said. Peyton, I said. I made a throw and missed. He giggled. I infected you with my bad throw. I ran to get the ball, and we threw in silence for a while. Do we take turns throwing? He asked. Okay, but I'm the first one, I said. He agreed, and we both made two three-pointers in a row before he missed and got his H. He had a HOR before I missed, and then he started making the stupidest throws I could ever imagine in my life. Beating off the floor, through the shield, with his left hand. We tied the score, after which he missed, and I finished him off. He laughed. I was destined to lose. Yes, it is destined. You've done some tricks, Sheldon. I grew up playing against two older brothers, he said. The only way to stay in the game were tricks. I was ready to leave, so I told him, thanks for playing, and went my way. Over the next two weeks, I saw him twice more, and the second time we played one-on-one. -on -one. He was taller than me, and I had to work hard, but I was faster. I had enough steals and rebounds to win, but it was a real competition. I think he gave in to me, because I was a girl, and he didn't fight me often. When the game was over, he asked if I wanted a drink. Do you mean to have a drink like in a club, or take a Gatorade energy drink? I asked. Well, I like the idea of the club, he said. Although I don't think I have a chance, so I was going to suggest you buy a bottle of something in the lobby. I laughed. Yes, anyway, we're a bit sweaty for the club. Would you go to the club with me? He asked. Well, that is when we're not sweaty. I looked him over. Is there anyone who thinks they are in a relationship with you, who will be disappointed that you took me to the club? He chuckled. That's a good question. No, you won't find it. I'm divorced, Peyton. It's been about nine months now. Why? I asked. He looked slightly shocked. Why'd I get divorced? I nodded. Yes. My ex decided that Wichita was too small a market for her talents, he said. Maybe she's right. If we see her in the place of the presenter of some national news program, I will agree. Have you decided not to move? I asked. That's what she decided, he said. Her life was changing, and I wasn't a part of that change. I see. I'm sorry, but you have to ask questions, I said. Oh, believe me, I understand. I don't have much experience, but I'm glad you're asking questions. I laughed. Okay, do now it's your turn. Yes, somewhere like that. However, I have very little practice to come up with them. Is this something recent, or have you always had problems with it? I asked. He chuckled, and it was just charming. No, I think I was good at it once. I haven't been practicing much lately. Well, you're catching on pretty well, I said. Now, can you make a mid-range jump shot? Hey, that's the best thing about my game, he said. Really? He laughed. 
Okay, you're better at basketball than me. Probably in everything. Although I still don't give up. Yes, respect for that. I raise my blue Powerade drink. I have to go, Peyton, he said. A hot day? I asked. The hottest. I have a four-year-old daughter. And I've never missed an opportunity to read her a bedtime story. I was a little stunned. Doesn't she live with her mom? I'm not saying I should. It's just that it's so small. I do not know what I am saying. I was very impressed and touched by how much he loves his daughter. He chuckled. Being a star doesn't really go well with young children. Well, your ex seems like a real bitch. I said. What's her name? My ex. No, stupid your daughter. Oh, exactly. Her name is Blake. Oh, I like that name. I said. Well, I have to pick her up from her parents' house, he said. Tell me, Peyton, would you like to go to the club with me sometime? Of course I will. Give me the number, I said. He handed me his phone, and I sent myself a text message. Call me anytime, I said. He didn't call. Bastard. I guess I was just too out of my mind. I saw him at the gym and told him about it. His face flushed, and he stammered. I'm sorry, Peyton. I took out my phone dozens of times and chose your number. Just couldn't pull the trigger? I asked. Well, I wanted to believe me. It was just so awkward. And maybe you don't understand it, but you're kind of scary, Peyton. What the fuck? What am I scaring you with? Hmm? The fact that you are young, beautiful, and regularly beat me at basketball, he said. Why don't you have a boyfriend? I have my own standards, I said. Come to dinner with me and explain them to me, he said. I'll go if you bring your daughter, I said. Really? I... I would love to. I didn't think you'd agree. Do I look like someone who hates children? I asked. He laughed. No, I'm sorry. I just meant that you're obviously a student. You're the most beautiful girl on campus, in fact, in the entire state, and I really have no idea why you want to have dinner with me, much less me, my daughter. You're in the game, man. Well, not in basketball, but in another sense. He laughed. You're funny, Peyton. I smiled my best smile, and we agreed to go out to dinner on Friday night. I still haven't answered his question about the guy. I've been on dates, but with my current selection of frat boys, jocks, and nerds, there's no one I'm going to date seriously. Well, maybe not with him. On Friday, he picked me up at the dorm. I was watching him and saw him getting out of the new Subaru BRZ and went out to meet him as he didn't know my room number. The expression on his face when he saw me was exactly what I expected when I got dressed. Wow, he said. I've never seen you in anything other than sportswear. God, you're great, Peyton. I laughed. You look good too, Sheldon. Where's Blake? He's waiting for us in the car. We went out and he opened the door for me. When I looked into the back seat, there was a cute doll sitting in her little car seat. She was shaking her legs, smiling, and I wanted to take her out and cuddle her. She has very light, almost white hair, and the most amazing huge violet eyes. I swear, these are the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. Hi, she said. Are you Peyton? Dad told me about you. He said that you play basketball very well. Well, I could do a lot of things, I said. Yes, I'm Peyton, and you're probably Blake. She nodded vigorously. Yes, we're going to Uncle Dale's and Ree. Ree? A restaurant? I prompted. The smile she gave me for helping me melted me into a puddle. You're so cute. I told her. Sheldon listened to this dialogue, quietly shaking with laughter. He knew exactly who he had in that car seat, that bastard. It was obvious that he was proud of her, as if to say, yes, this little angel is mine. To Uncle Dale's then? Where are you taking me, Sheldon? He laughed. It's not as bad as it seems. By the way, the place is not called Uncle Dale's. It has Irish-Mexican cuisine, and as it turned out, it is one of three owned by my brother-in-law. Oh, so you're the owner's relative. Will we get VIP service? What is VIP? Blake's tiny voice came from the back seat. A very important person, I said. Do you know what that means? Sort of, she said. It's like dad or something like that. Oh my God, she's just adorable. Yes, that's right, honey. He obviously found it all very funny. To be honest, neither do I. He thought he was taking advantage of me, but I've been thinking about it since the minute he told me he had her. I love children, and this is not an ordinary child. Thanks to Blake, Sheldon has become 10 times more attractive, and he's already quite attractive. We were driving, Blake was chatting with me about how she made a house out of ice cream sticks in kindergarten, and then I felt my hair being pulled. When I looked, I saw that she was leaning forward to reach me, 
and her little chubby fingers were playing with one of my curls. She looked up at me, and the look in her gorgeous eyes changed my mind. I like your hair, she said. Oh my god, I have hair, lots and lots of hair. It's kind of like my business card. If a black girl takes care of her hair, they can be on top. I take care of my own. Blake braided hers, and I pulled on it. I like your braid too, Blake. Maybe someday, we can do each other's hair? I wish I could, but I'm not doing very well, she explained. Dad styles my hair mostly. I gave him a sideways glance. Sheldon has hidden talents, I said. He laughed. Sheldon is a slave and does whatever his daughter wants, he said. One day she will look at old photos and ask me why I did her hair like that. I can imagine, I said. What do you think you'll say to her? That she wanted it that way, he chuckled. We arrived at the restaurant and I helped Blake out of her car seat. She was so tiny and adorable. And the first thing she did was grab my arm and lead me inside. I gave her my heart that day and I can't get it back. Her father was also very charming. Uncle Dale was at the restaurant and personally took care of us. I think he was tasked with impressing me, and he did. The food was delicious, the service was impeccable, but it was the company that made my evening unforgettable. Blake insisted on going to my room and checking on her when we got back, so we never had a chance to be alone, even though Sheldon kissed me on the cheek when he left. Blake wanted me to hug her for her kiss, and hugging this little warm thing to me, I kissed her on both cheeks, which was quite enough to shoot it on video. It wasn't until Sheldon met me on Tuesday night to play racquetball that we spent time alone. He asked me out again, and Blake informed me when I arrived at their house that it was an adult date. It was impressive, this one of those gable roof houses built on the shore of the lake, and I liked it immediately. Does that mean you're not going? I asked her. Yes, my grandmother is coming to stay with me. We're going to bake cookies, she admitted. Oh, that sounds great, I said. Will I get it? Oh, yes. We're making it for you, she said. Dad and I decided that you like cookies. Oh, I like it, dear bug. Finally, Sheldon took me to that very club for a drink and turned out to be a competent dancer. He was white and stiff, but he relaxed pretty quickly and I was good enough to make him look even better. I feel like an old man, he said when we took our first break. I laughed. Why? Well, because I haven't done it for so long and you're so young. Dude, I'm 24, I said. How old are you, 30? Trust me, you're not old. He chuckled. I'm 34, Peyton. I'm probably the oldest guy who's ever asked you out. You'll be surprised, Sheldon. I am accosted by men from 70 to 18. And what was your oldest date date? He asked. I'm not asking about age, so I don't know. I told him. Maybe 60. Really? Yeah, he was pretty damn fit and looked good, I said. But not as handsome as you. He wanted to be my sugar daddy. Can I be your sugar daddy? He asked. I couldn't help but laugh. Let's see. So far, you've done well. Let's dance. Our movement speed was exceptionally slow. Every time we were together, I liked him more and more. By the time I graduated from college, we were already together, we became lovers, and the fact that he and Blake attended my graduation became the main event of the evening. I introduced him to my father. Mac, my father, thought he was crazy at first. Are you dating a white man, baby? Are you sure about this? When you married mom, you had no problem going on dates with a white woman, I said. And suddenly you became some kind of racist? He laughed. No, it's just that you're my child, and I don't want you to make mistakes. What the fuck, dad? You're making some very unpleasant assumptions. I love him. You know Blake. How is it possible that you consider a man who is such a daughter to be a mistake? Well, hush, hush, tiger cub. I didn't say he was a mistake. I don't know him. I just love you, and I want you to be happy. Your mom would want that for you, too. I was still a little angry. I think I would, but she would have found a much better way to say it than you. I'm sorry, kitten. I apologize for my tone. Do you forgive me? The fact that I was wrapped in his huge arms and squeezed so hard that I couldn't breathe helped. Yeah, just give him a chance, Dad. Okay. I promise. Are we still going to volunteer at the Child Protection Center on Saturday? As always, I said. I'll pick you up. Sheldon's parents were a little nervous when we first met, but they turned out to be wonderful people, and his mother, and was one of the sweetest people I've ever met. His father, Mike, arranged for me to meet him for breakfast once a week, and I got to know him better. He looks a lot like Sheldon, or maybe the other way around. Anyway, the first time we were together, he asked, 
Do you love Sheldon? It was after Sheldon and I had been dating for three months, but by that time I hadn't thought too much about it. I thought about it for a minute. I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about him, I said. I have romantic feelings for him. Well, I know he feels them for you, he said. I winked at him. That's good to hear. Did you invite me here for questioning Mike? He laughed. I understand that it seems so. No, not really. After Blake's mom left, he was very depressed. I don't want to see him like this again. Being dumped never builds trust. And it seems like he's just had it. I mean, to ask out a beautiful girl like you. Thanks, Mike. But you don't have to worry about me breaking someone's heart. I don't have that in me. He may decide that I'm too weird to put up with me. And he'll be happy to leave me. But I promise that it won't be my doing. Tell me some of your oddities, he said. Well, I have such characters on social media. They are me, but they are all fake. I just play with them as a hobby. Some people find this strange. He laughed. Yes, it's quite strange, Peyton, but it doesn't surprise me. Even if I don't know much about you. Why are you doing this? I shrugged my shoulders. I don't know. It's fun. You come up with some outrageous nonsense about the person you represent and watch how others react to it. It's not really you, but people act like it's you, even though everyone knows it's not. It's like playing a role, but everyone pretend to take it seriously. It sounds fake to me, he said. Yes, but do you like watching movies even though you know they're not real? Yes. I've never thought about that, Peyton. I understand why Sheldon is fascinated by you. I patted his hand, and I understand where he got this charm from. I'm also very smart. He snorted. Yes, I noticed. The parents are subdued. The mission is accomplished. The barriers were removed to check if we really have something. It turned out that yes, the man was very romantic, and after a year, I idolized him. He was better than I even wanted. Ecstasy that just doesn't stop and makes you slightly regret Firstly, that you never knew this before, and secondly, about what you were like before. That girl is gone, and you will never return to her. This is what you deserve, and the chemical pathways in your brain are changing so that your expectations will always remain the same. This was our first time, and it never changed. This is my man, and no one else can ever be close to that. He wasn't my first, but he became something more. It's not even that he's bigger or better but that this is him, like I've never felt before or even imagined. I completely and completely fell in love with this man. And it's not that everything he does gives me pleasure. We had quarrels, violent quarrels. The difference is what happened during and after the quarrels. I always felt guilty if it was my fault, which happened a lot. And he obviously felt the same way. I couldn't get mad at him because he always did or said something that reminded me that this was my man. My life became what I dreamed of, and when I got my master's degree, we got married. It wasn't a big change, because we had been living together for two years already. The only one for whom it mattered a lot was Blake. We've been a mutual admiration society since we met. But after our simple ceremony, which was attended only by Blake and our parents, she came over, pulled me down, forced me to kneel, hugged me, and said, I love you, Mom. All my dreams have come true. This led to the fact that I lost my temper. After that, I became a mom and tried to be the best mom on the planet. I think I succeeded. But 11 years later, when my little clone had just started going to school, everything went awry. I could see that Sheldon was worried about something, but I waited. After all, he always told me what was the matter. We invited my father and Sheldon's parents to a barbecue. The ribs lay on the foil, languished slowly, and were ready to be poured with barbecue sauce. I made it myself and bottled it. I was just getting one of them out of the closet when he stood next to me and amazed me with his words. I was wearing panties and nothing else, well, because I always walk around the house like that. When he said that, I dropped the jar, it broke, and yes, the barbecue sauce was also on my panties. Peyton, all the time I've known you, I've been lying, he said. At this moment, the bank and, damn it, what's the matter with you, Shell? Heck, look at this. He hurriedly took out a napkin and wiped me, and then the whole mess, and I sat and thought for another minute. I got up and put on shorts and a tank top. I felt too vulnerable to stay naked. When I returned, he had already finished cleaning and poured me a glass of wine. I took out another jar, poured over the ribs, and returned them to the fire. Finally, she sat down opposite him at the bar. Okay, spit it out, dude. It better be a good one. I'm sorry, Peyton, but that's not true. What do you mean? 
I asked. Well, you know about the fact that they wanted to promote me at work? Yes. And you mean you didn't get a promotion? Obviously not. Otherwise, it wouldn't have taken so long. I just wasn't standing anywhere near it, Peyton. I'm starting to feel that way about a lot of things. You deserve better than me. I'm starting to wonder if I'll ever be the man you need. It seems to me that all this time, I've been lying to you, saying that I am the man. I was terrified. How could I let this happen? I don't have time to think about it. My man is in pain. I went over and hugged him from behind like an anaconda. And I wasn't going to let go. Honey, I don't know what made you feel like that. Maybe I did something? If so, tell me and let me apologize because I want you to know that I don't feel that way at all. Blake and Elika too. We think that you are you. And that's all we want. I turned his head and kissed him fiercely. He answered half seriously. I wasn't going to let that go unnoticed. I turned him around on the stool and stood between his legs, hugging his neck and looked straight into his kind blue eyes. Lie to me, I said. What? I said, lie to me, asshole. If her whole life has been a lie, lie to me again. Tell me it's okay. Tell me that you love me. Lie to me, Shell. He sat and looked at me. Did the whole promotion thing really hurt you that much, honey? I'm sorry I didn't notice that. Sheldon, I loved you yesterday and I love you today. That promotion would be nice, yes, but you don't have it now, and I love you anyway. Do you understand that at least? Yes, but it's been almost two weeks since I was interviewed, and bullshit, I said. I don't care if it's been two months. I don't care if they give it to some jerk. Do you understand, Shell? It doesn't matter. I wanted you to get it just because you want it, not for yourself. I found that his arms were slowly rising to embrace me. He cleared his throat. I'm just... I thought I could, if only I could half catch up with you, be as close to such a strange perfection as you are. I laughed. Yes, I am. And that's fine. Oh my God, Sheldon. Just lie to me. I want you to know that this is not a lie at all. I know who you are. You can tell yourself and me that it's a lie. But I know. Are you going to lie to me, Shell? No. He began. He looked up at my face. Well, that is yes. Is not it so? Yes. I said, when are you going to start? He looked up at me again, reading my face. Now. That's right, I said. But only after this. I tried to swallow his tongue, felt his hands on my curls, and we passed out. While I was trying to catch my breath, he pulled me to him. Thanks, Peyton. Because of the whole work thing, I felt very depressed, and I just let it spill out into a lot of other things. I saw Charles hitting on you that night. This, along with work, how busy we are, and how difficult it is to meet everyone's expectations, just got to me. I started to think that you could have someone better. Don't let fucking Charles get into your mind, honey, I said. He's not mine. Let him be young and healthy. He's nice enough. And yes, he's famous and all that. Can you imagine what will happen to me with him? Jesus, Shell, this dude is a kid. I know, but you're so hot. And he is all like that. And you're all like that. I told him. Your daughters idolize you, man. Damn, I worship you myself. We need to communicate better. Honey, the only expectations you don't live up to are your own. The girls and I are waiting for you to have a job. We don't care if we're a finance director or a watchman. Seriously, I want you to become a CFO if you can and want to. If you don't get this job or don't want it, I'll still be happy. The girls are happy. Besides, I make a hell of a lot shell. You can retire tomorrow if you want and spend your time pampering us. He smiled. Maybe, he said. I can't think of a better job than this. Really? So come on. I snuggled up to my man. He swam. And I got up after a while and went to check my ribs. They were perfect. And a murderous smell of steam emanated from them in all directions. They were perfect, elastic enough not to fall off the bone. I got pretty deep into myself. What, I ask, makes us ignore our partner's prompts. I need to be more vigilant. How did I let my beloved man get to such a state without dispelling his fears? I realized something. When you love, you do everything to amuse each other's self-esteem. You admit that the other needs this stroking and that this is your job. I'm going to do a better job. The dude is a damn good basketball player. Even at his age. I laughed at my own joke. I'm better. But who cares? I heard a noise behind me, and two huge arms hugged me. Peyton, I'm in love with you as much as I was the day I realized I was in love. 
Thank you for being there for me and not judging me. I spun around in his arms and pressed my cheek against his chest. You do the same for me and more, I said, and fired him up with my best kiss. Ugh, it was Elika. Why are you doing this in front of me? My dad immediately appeared next to her and lightly spanked her, which made her squeal in mock indignation. You'd better cheer them up, he said. She raised her fist in the air. Hurrah, she squeaked in her most desperate voice. What are we happy about? Blake came out to us, followed by Sheldon's parents. Mom and Dad fell in love, Elika explained. Um, is this news? Mike asked. Blake came over and hugged us. My daughter is tall. How could this happen? Elika wanted her share, and we also grabbed her and the ancestors and hugged them. I want some more fried ears, I said. We sat down at the table and began to enjoy the barbecue. Sheldon caught my eye and winked. I'm starting to lie from now on, he whispered in my ear. I hugged him, staining his shirt with barbecue sauce. He didn't seem to mind. He got the job, and since then I've never heard anything but lies from his mouth.